Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites on whose land ye dwell. But as far as me and my household, we will serve the Lord. First and foremost, only give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostle slash elder bishop of Great Millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here, forbear. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. All right? Serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. Well, look, look, we got to fear the Lord, man. And then you got our people, you got the majority of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which we are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the biblical Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, all right? And the, and the Israelites that have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that may look like these other nations, right? You got Israelites that look like Chinese people. You got Israelites that look like Arabs. You got Israelites that look like um, Dahe East Indians. You see, Japanese, um, so forth and so forth, so-called Africans. You got Israelites that look like these heathen nations. The Lord is saying what? Who are you going to serve? Look, time out for all the games, all the playing around, all this lollygagging. Do you not see the Lord destroying this place, man? Do you not see violence happening throughout the four corners of the earth? Do you not see this kingdom, this age, this rulership coming to a fast, a fast, speedy riddance, man? So this is most definitely not the time to be playing around with your soul. What did the Lord say again? This is a quick little lesson, man. Because riches profit not in the day of wrath. You think your riches going to get you um, saved from the God of the Bible? He bring wrath to this place? Hell no, man. You Israelites, Nick Rose, Latins, and Native Americans, you better get your house in order. Because who they ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ? The Heavenly Father, who they ignorantly call God, the Most High, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Lord Yahweh Shai, who they ignorantly call Jesus. Because remember, we're Hebrew Israelites, all right? And our Lord and Savior, he was a Jew. He was the king of the Jews. So his name was in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai, he saves, he delivers. He's getting ready to come and destroy this place, man. Just, remember, just a quick reminder, man. Just a quick reminder. The love of many. Look, look, what it say? Um, I, I, I want to get it right quick. The love of money is the beginning let me get it right quick. I, I, I only want to quote. I want to get it. I want to get it right quick. First Timothy. Let me just get it right quick. And I'm going to come right back. Our people do anything for money. They don't want to serve the Lord no more. It's all about that bag. It's all about that money. Let's get this. St. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 10. And it reads, for the love of money. Not having money. Because the scriptures tell us that money is a defense. It says, for the love of money. Look what our people that did for the love of money, man. What the scriptures tell us, basically, um, envy not the oppressor. Or who's the oppressor? The so-called white man. Sleazy e Esau Edom. Love not the oppressor and choose none of his ways, man. Well, now it says, envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways, right? And our people, they envy their slave master. You see, they want where he got. But what did this man have to do to get it? He had to rob, steal, lie, murder. You see? Covet, covet people. And, and you look up the definition for the word covet. It means you want something that somebody else got. And you're willing to do anything to get it. So what does the scripture say again? First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. People that sacrifice their mama, their daddies. Best friends, homeboys, dogs, cats, you name it, man. All for the love of money. You see? 
Once again, ain't nothing wrong with having money because money is the is a defense. You need money to pay your bills. You need money to buy food, so forth and so on. But the scriptures say the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some covet after, here we go again. You gotta and this lesson for the Hebrew Israelites. They covet after riches, man. Meaning they see somebody on the and it's all over the internet, it's, uh, every commercial. You see somebody with something, you like, yo, I, I, I want that. And I'm gonna do what well, you're at 50 cents said, get rich or die trying. When the scriptures say, strive not to be rich, give give us neither poverty nor riches. Be content with whatever the Lord bless you. The Lord about to come back and destroy this place. We're gonna be you're not even gonna be able to put a, a price on our riches, man. But we gotta we gotta wait on it. The hopeful lack are gonna, gonna wait on it. But this thing is bigger than just riches, man. Alright? We're trying to get delivered out of here. It says, it says, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith. You got guys that knew God, women and men and women that knew they was Hebrew Israelites. They left the faith, they'll say, for money, for a record deal, for um a contract, no saying, to be on TV, so forth and so on. And, and you see them months and years later destroyed. Can't even show their eyes no more when the eyes is the window to the soul. All for that money, man. You're, you're air from the faith chasing money. Uh, look, that's what that's what Sleazy E pushes. He pushes chase the bag. Don't chase out the Yahweh Bashim. Don't serve the Lord. Serve money. Serve that bag. When the scriptures quote the quote and it says you can't serve two masters. You see? Let's finish this. This is they air from the faith. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Even Big told you, more money, more problems. And then, you know what I'm saying? Look, once you make an oath or a covenant with the heathens, look, look, they're going to require a sacrifice. You see? Over and over. No, it never ends, man, till you end up getting up out of here. They're going to drain your soul, man. And you see Israel, before they um get famous and all, they look pretty normal. But then as soon as they get famous, get up in the higher echelon, you know what I'm saying? With, with the people, if you, if you know what I'm saying, you read between the lines, they start looking real dark. And then you got a council of uh, entertainers saying they can't even sleep in their house with mirrors, man. Cause they, cause look, when they look in the mirror, they see them demons, man, that they had to make an oath with, a covenant with. And we ain't gonna really get too deep into that, man. It's a dark, dark, cruel world out there, Israel. Turn back to your how about Shemel Look, you can't go wrong serving the Lord. Look, look, we can't go wrong serving our power, right? So let's go back to Joshua. Let's go right back to Joshua. Joshua 24, quick little lesson. Riches will not deliver you, Israel. You fighting tooth and nail to get that bag. Looking real through out there, man. Joshua 24 and 14. Now therefore fear the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, all right, in the Hebrew tongue. It says, um, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. And in truth, you got to be honest. Be honest with yourself. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, you sure enough can't be honest with the God of the Bible, right? The only book for the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is the Bible. And ain't, ain't, I'm not doing this video to make you believe. Only, only the Lord can make you believe. I'm just a messenger, right? It says, um, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. The, the same gods that our people, did, which are really idols, that they're serving right about now, they serve on the other side. When we came out of Egypt, our people were serving those same idols, but they got different names that they call it. Look, Buddha, Allah, Santa Maria, the Hindu goddess Shiva, uh, the Kemet gods. It, it, it's, it, it's, oh yeah, um, so called Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Which that's not our Lord and Savior's name, alright? Alright? Jesus Christ is an idol, man, alright? Our Lord and Savior's name is Yahweh Shai. He saves, He delivers, man, alright? Oh, I, I want to I get this. What, what did I want to get, man? Man. Oh yeah, I, I want to get I want to get this right quick. Because the Lord said, you know what I'm saying? Um, what, what did it say again? Joshua 24 and 14 in the middle and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt because look all those gods of the other nations that our people don't saying serve with idols and I want to get that right quick let's get Psalms right quick quick little lesson 
Psalm chapter 96, verse 4. For the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared. Because why? Because fear is the beginning of knowledge. Fearing the God of the Bible is the beginning of knowledge, right? It says, um, he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods, Allah, Buddha, Santa Maria, the Hindu God of Shiva, our people starting to really bug out, man. And, and, and what the Lord, the Lord said, call them, when all hell break loose, call on those idols that you serve right about now and see if they deliver you in a time of your trouble. Going right back to Jeremiah um, 11, 11 um, chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. You see? It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens, man. So, so choose you this day who you're going to serve. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Read going right back, Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil, if it seem like it's a bad thing unto you to serve the Lord, if, if what I'm saying is offending you, Nick Rose, Latinos, the Native Americans, look, look, telling you to serve the God of the Bible, what, what the Lord actually speak, always speaks through men. You see? And, and, and it's storming outside, but a major storm is coming. It's storming outside, but a major storm is coming. And you you two-thirds, you're going to get caught smack dead in the middle of it. At least you repent, man. It says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, because anytime we bring out this word, our people say, oh, there you go with that Bible again. There you go, reading them Bible scriptures again. You, you show you're right. Show you're right. You see? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. If it seem evil to serve the God of the Bible, then choose Allah, choose Buddha, choose Santa Maria, choose the Hindu God of Shiva, choose them Kemet gods, choose JC, and see where it leaves you, man. All right? See where it leaves you. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods, meaning the idols of the Amorites, meaning them Hamites, them Deuterine Africans, which we're not, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So look, look, go, go do whatever you want to do. You see? Go do whatever you want to do. You, you think you're going to be able to serve the Lord and serve money. It don't, it don't work like that. Let's get this. St. Matthew chapter 6. St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Bear, bear with me. Say Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. And it reads, give me one second. Give me one second. Say Matthew chapter 24, verse, um, let me see. Bear with me. Say Matthew chapter 6. Begin with verse 24. It says, no man can serve two masters. No man or woman. Israelite man or woman can serve two masters, right? For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the Most High and Mammoth. You can't serve the Heavenly Father and Mammoth, which is the God of money. Th thought you knew that already, Israel. You can't serve God. That's why the scripture that I brought out in Joshua 24, you know what I'm saying? Verse 14 said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Man, look, make up your mind and look and do it quick. Do it, do it quick. Let's get this though. Let's go back to Proverbs. Do it quick, Israel. Whoever you're going to serve, you better choose. I, I know you see all hell breaking loose. But that's one thing about the Hebrew Israelites. They always procrastinate. They wait. They always wait to the. They, what's the old saying? They lay to their own funeral, man. When the scripture say, "Make no tarrying," we're gonna get that next too. A quick little lesson. Quick little lesson through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. The Lord was like, "Yo, tell, look, look. Ask them who is they gonna choose. Who is who they gonna serve." But look, make make sure the answer is smart, though, Israel. Make sure the answer is smart. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches. Because that's what our people are going after. Our people are killing themselves for money. Just got to be famous. Don't don't want to be humble. Don't want to take the low. You know what I'm saying? You see, our people always want to be in the public's eye. You know, just in, anything for fame. Anything for fortune and fame. Because they, they think gain is godliness. When the scriptures say those that think gain is godliness, get away from them people. Because I'm about to bring a wrath upon them. Soon come, right? 
And then I'm saying that you see all these rich Jakes, these rich Israelites. What are they doing for Yahweh by Shimei Shai? Nothing. Ain't paying no tithes. Ain't putting nothing towards. I'm saying the Lord's ministry. Nothing at all. No water. No nothing. But oh yeah, bless me, Lord. Take care of me, Lord. And then anytime they're accepting the wars and they say, I want to thank God. What God are you talking about? Because the word God just means power. What power are you talking about? You 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 want to thank? It ain't the God of the Bible. You see. Once again, Proverbs 11 and 4, riches, that fortune and that fame, boats, you know what I'm saying? About three, four houses, you know what I'm saying? All these damn cars that you don't even need, 30, 40 watches, shit like a thousand pair of shoes. You, now, Israel, you know that's too much shit, you know? Riches, and all of it's going to burn soon, come, right? Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Look, serving you, how about Shimei Hashem, fear, truth, and sincerity. That this is what's going to get you delivered from death. Matter of fact, since I said I read, I'm just flowing in the spirit too, man. I'm just flowing in the spirit. I want to get um, I want to get James right quick. Let me get James. This is James, chapter one. I'm just flowing in the spirit. Lord, one of the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. That's what we do these lessons for. This is James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Because I'm people into all kind of wickedness, man. You see? The scripture say, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. The Lord wants us to come humble, not proud. Because the look, pride go up before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. Plus, the most high resists the proud. You see? And pride is hateful before the most high and man. It's just and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. So, what's able to save your soul, you Hebrew Israelites? Taking heed to this word. Yeah, the word is the Bible. The words of the Bible. That's the word that is able to save your soul. All right? Not the Egyptian book of the dead, not the Quran, all right? Not the um, 42 negative laws of Miyak. You see, the um, the book of Gilgamesh, none of that nonsense, man. You see? The words of the Bible, This taking heed to this is able to, to save your soul, man. The scriptures tell us what? Labor not to be rich. The scriptures tell us, uh, Proverbs 15 and 16, better is a little. With the fear of the Lord, the much riches with um gotten by by wickedness, pretty much, man. And plus, you can't trust in uncertain riches, man. Look, you got it one day, you don't got it the next day. But I want to read this though, Proverbs chapter thirty. Proverbs chapter thirty. I saw the seven. Two things have I required of thee: deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches so you don't want to have too much and you don't want to have too little you pretty much want to be in the middle man all right so when we constantly because the lord wants us to constantly need them man and when you're too rich you know what I'm saying when you got all this damn money you, you you feel like you don't need the lord no more and, and if you're too poor and you bumming you're out there on the streets and all that you're gonna you're gonna go and go somewhere and steal some shit you know what i'm saying that, that's what's gonna happen and you're gonna take the Lord's name in vain, which we get ready to read it. It says, um, feed me with food convenient for me. Give me just enough, Lord. Give me just enough, Lord. Least I be full, meaning rich, and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or least I be poor, you're on the streets, you're a bum, and still, and take thy name of thy power in vain. So you don't wanna to be too rich and you don't wanna to be too poor. You just wanna be straight in the middle, man. You want to be straight in the middle. Plus, I, 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 let's get this look right quick. Because people look at you, and, they, and if you ain't really got the best cars, the clothes, and all that, they look at you like you ain't nothing. They look at you like you ain't nothing. Matter of fact, let's, let's hold, I got a whole lot of scriptures coming through my head. And I'm going to try not to make this a too long of a lesson. But whatever the, the scriptures feed me, I'm going to feed you with. This is St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 12. Let's see, St. Luke chapter 12. And, and it's red letter. Lord Yahweh Shai speaking with it. We call it Jesus. Let's see, 15. And he said unto them, Take heed 
and beware of covetousness. Beware of the Israelites that want something that somebody else already got, right? It says, for a man's life consists of not in the abundance of things which he possesses. But that's what our people look at you as. You see? If you ain't got all this status, if you ain't got yacht boats and all that, if you ain't got the diamond rings, you ain't got the fancy clothes, the gators and all this other stupid stuff, you know, <laughs> airplanes and all that, the finer things in life, that's what that's a standard. When people look at you, that's what they are really hold you up to, so to speak, right? The things that you have. When the Lord said, nah, I don't, nah. I don't work like that Man, the carnal man Look at things like that, right? Oh, his shoes look dusty I, I, I need me a ball I need me a six-figure nigga You know what I'm saying? No, the Lord said, nah, nah, nah They ain't who I'm looking for They ain't who I'm looking for Let's read this again And we're going to read who the Lord is looking for St. Luke chapter 12 and Once again, there ain't nothing wrong with having money but when you covered it out of it and you you in love with it, so you, you're just willing to do anything to get it, that, that's where you go off at. St. Luke 12 and 15, once again, and it reads, He saith unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists of not in the abundance of things which he possesses. But that's what the world base everything off of. If you ain't got the fancy car, you're a nobody. If you ain't got the big ass house, you know what I'm saying? With all these different rooms and all that, you're a nobody. If you, if you ain't bling blinging it, you ain't nobody. Well, that's, that's to the world. And the scriptures say, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. But I want to get this. This is James chapter 2, verse 5. Hawking, meaning, listen, my beloved brethren, the house of David, have not the most high chosen the poor of this world rich in faith so we might not have all the glamour and the glitz which we don't want it any damn way i don't like to be seen anyway i, I like to, to stay low pro you see i don't like attention you see and that that's what the lord loves a person that's not seeking attention hawking my beloved brethren have not the most high yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who they even call God and Jesus Christ, chose, chosen the poor of this world. The Lord chose the poor of this world, man. Rich in faith. He chose the Israelites that believe in him, even though they haven't seen him in 2,000 years. You see? They believe in something that they haven't even seen, man. That's faith to believe in something you don't see. This is in heirs of the kingdom. Which he had promised to them that love him. And how do we show the Lord that we love him? By following the statutes, commandments of the Bible to the best of our ability, man. That's what the Lord loves. Give me neither poverty nor riches, man. Labor not to be rich. You see? Matter of fact, let's get this. Re remember, Israel, wisdom is better than rubies. Wisdom, Israel. What's that, Proverbs, the 13th chapter? Now this Proverbs um, 3. Uh, matter of fact, before I even read that, let, let's get let's get this. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11. For wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. For wisdom is better than rubies. You got our people killing themselves for rubies. Killing themselves for fortune and fame when they should be killing themselves for this wisdom coming out of the Bible, which starts off with the fear of the Lord. The Lord is going to, you, you Israelites, you're going to fear the Lord soon come. Sooner or later, you're going to fear the Lord. You see? And you think, you think you got all day. You see? You think you got all day to play around. No, the God of the Bible is judging this place now, man. Once again, Proverbs 8, chapter 8, verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired or not to be compared to it. So you can't compare nothing to the knowledge that we got. This, look, the scriptures tell us that these people are going to be going, like, right about now, people are going crazy over fortune and fame. You got people chasing that bag, right? They look, got to get to the bag. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on the grind, right? When the Lord says, so come, our people going to be killing themselves, trying to find out where the men of the Lord at to get this word, man. And I'll get that right quick. But you ain't going to find us, man. That's why I get this word now, Israel. Get the word now. What is that, um... Is it Amos? Let's see, bear with me. I think it's Amos. We'll, we'll, we'll find it. <laughs> it's 
Amos chapter 8 verse 11 and it reads, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, that I will send a famine in the land. Which a famine is coming to this land, but this ain't what the scripture is talking about, right? It says, um, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So soon come. All you Israelites that, that ignored the words of the Lord, guess what? It's not going to be on the internet anymore. It's not going to be at your fingertips anymore, Israel. And you're going to cry bitterly. Israel, you're going to cry bitterly when the Lord take this word off the streets, man. What it say? Behold, the days come and it is it's fastly approaching. Said the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread. Nor a thirst of water, which is coming. You Israelites are gonna die of thirst, you're gonna die by way of lack of food and all that, man. It's, it says, but of hearing the words of the Lord, which which is the Bible. Alright? No other book. It's not the Quran. It's not the book of the dead. It's not the Egyptian book of the dead. Alright? It's not the negative, the 42 negative laws of Miyak. You see, it's not the book of the Mormons. It's the Bible, man. The book of the Lord is the Bible, right? The B-I-B-L-E. And they, look, and they, the Hebrew Israelites, because look, they're going to want answers in that day. You wait, dog. You wait till, wait till this dollar crash. What you, what you Israelites going to do when the dollar crash and the stock market crash and everything that you put your money into is going down the drain? What are you going to be left with then? Because look, you ignored the Lord, the Lord and his word and the men that was teaching it. You see? And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro going crazy. You Israelites are really about to lose your mind, man. You see? They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. And shall not find it. You see? It's, it's going to be critical then, man. Getting this word is critical Because it's going to be crucial In that day when you can't get it man It's going to be crucial conflict in that day People going to be fighting each other All hell going to be breaking loose That's why the Lord said repent Israel Turn back Turn back Cry unto your power Yahweh by Shem Shai. Why he may be found Seek ye the Lord Why he may be found This is my last one So rock chapter 5 verse 7 Make no tarrying. The word tarrying means to wait. Don't wait, Israel. Do not wait. All right? We, all of us was taught wrong. We all follow behind false leaders and false teachers and false doctrines and false philosophies and all that. But now it's time to come back to the God of the Bible. All right? Who they, who they eagerly call God and Jesus. The Most High, Yahweh. Who they eagerly call God. And His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Who they ignorantly call Jesus. Come back, man. Make no tarrying. You see? And put that off from day to day. Don't say, I do it tomorrow. I, I get to it tomorrow. I get to it the day after that. No, man. Do it now. Men and women. Okay? Men, women, and children. Israelites, turn back now. The great day of the Lord is near. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. See all that playing around? The Lord is going to come upon you suddenly. When you least expect it, Israel, you're going to get what you ask for and you deserve it. The Israelites that don't turn back from their wickedness, you deserve everything that comes your way. Just remember that. Just remember that. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shall be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. And that's exactly what's coming. The vengeance of the Lord. So choose you this day. Whom you going to serve Israel. Shalom.